for Tracy and Justin, I guess when you guys had some in the play in the second half, you guys would seem to be feeding off each other a bit. When some of those jump shots aren't falling, you guys have the success that you had in Tears. What's kind of what what what, what kind of what the, the two of you have when you're playing together with each other? Um, it's kind of well. Um, I'd say that we have um, mismatches down there. Um, if the bigger guys on either one of us, we can use our quickness. Um, if the smaller guys on us, we can use our strength. Um, so, and like you said, our shots were not falling really at all. Um, so, um, it was kind of part of the game plan to kind of go inside and really try and get easier baskets and you know punish them inside. John. Uh, Rob obviously dealt with a lot of injuries early this season. I mean, how rewarding or satisfying was it to be able to hit some of the shots you've hit over time? Um, very satisfying actually. I mean, we had made made shots when our team needed, so uh, I mean, we just trying to make big play when we needed. Tom, Trace, can you talk a little bit about what it was like for you emotionally out there, with it being as tight as it was, and the first overtime game in your college careers, to how you kept your, your calmness and everything about you? Um, it's really just my teammates. I'll give all the credit to them. Um, they keep me level-headed. They keep me just move on to the next play when I make a mistake. Um, but first overtime game in Assembly Hall was rocking. Um, shout out to the fans because they really helped us get that uh, six six man. So yeah. Trace, obviously, I think they were really trying not to let you have the ball. Basically, you only had three in the first half. Just what did you guys try to do to attack and try to you know put you back in better positions to score? You know, starting the beginning of the second half. Um, in the first half, I didn't really try to put an emphasis on running the floor very hard, and I thought that uh, I could beat my man on the floor. So in the second half, um, I tried to run past him and get as deep as I could, and then try to lay whip over him. And I got a few easy buckets on that. And when you see a shot go in, uh, you just want to. It gives you the confidence to knock down other ones. Yeah. Uh, Trace, you've been making some mid-range shots and even some threes in practice in the workouts. You've been working on turning over your, your opposite shoulder going right-handed. How game-ready are those things, and how much do those things help you, you know, now that you're starting to get 10 games, in, in 10, 11 games in the season? Um, I, I really just just practice those things just in case you have to use them. But um, I haven't really had to use them that much. I've, I've hit a few right-hand shots. Um, Teams are probably going to scout that here in the future, so I'm going to have to use the right hand more. Um, shooting out to 15 feet, really. Uh, I don't think I really need to shoot threes that much right now, but um, I'm just going to keep working on it. Jack? I guess you got to go back to a little bit of that question, what you talked about earlier, Justin. Just what are the different ways you guys want to attack a zone when you aren't able to space it with a three point? <laughs> I felt like they, they were bringing you to kind of the eye block or the, the free throw line, excuse me, a little bit tonight to drive the ball. Just what are some of the ways? You guys can use your athleticism to attack a zone when the threes don't go down. Um, well, specifically this game, they were kind of you know dropping off of us, especially when we caught it in the middle. Um, so you know that kind of allowed us to kind of get some spacing and really be able to attack going downhill because um, it was really it was a one on one, and we were able to use our quickness to um, get the shots that we wanted and you know a couple went down. For Justin or Trace, just as basketball players, speak to how hard it is for someone like Rob to play at the level he did, given how few practices he's actually been able to play in this year. Um, most definitely. Um, it's hard to come back from injury on anything, and especially coming back from an ankle injury and playing as much as he did. Um, I thought he really just raised his level, and um, he played really hard out there. And uh, when you're a game bird like he is, um, you're just going to get things done. I guess for any of you guys, just on the defensive end of the floor, I mean, how satisfied are you with, with that um, pass of the game, the way you guys played today? Uh, not at all. And what do you think you guys could do better? Uh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, yeah. I mean, give Nebraska, give Nebraska credit, they did, they did a really good game. Um, but we can't get spread out like that. We can't give up those easy shots, these easy threes. Um, we just got to get a little bit more tighter on defense. Uh, just to kind, of, to kind of play off of that, basically, it seemed like the, the backdoor cuts were something they were getting a lot of uh, easy layups on. Just sort of what did you see go wrong there uh, in terms of how they were able to get some of those kind of clean ones? Um, um, they they scouted us really well, um, and they you know they saw a. Weakness in our defense, and they were able to exploit it. Um, we really weren't expecting it, 
And so, um, I mean, give credit to them. They did a really good job in you know, working on it. Last question, Kevin. Yeah, Justin or Rob, kind of the emotion of Burke hitting the shot to send it to overtime. How did you guys kind of regroup, and how important was it to kind of get off to the quick start in overtime that you guys did? Uh, okay, yeah. Um, really, we just tried to keep our composure. I mean, you don't want to panic just to hit a big shot. So um, uh, I feel like our older guys really kept us level-headed, and um, I feel like we played really hard in, the, in overtime to get the win. All right, guys, thanks.